Hello and welcome. Today I have with me Patrick Mada Radisic, the proud holder of the third place at World Cup 2022. Last time we spoke to each other, uh, it was after you have won a TMGL. You've said that the next big accomplishment goal for yourself is to be to win the World Cup. Uh, you've said that it will be very hard, but you have been incredibly close to doing so this weekend. From 12th last year to 3rd this year, that must be an amazing feeling. Uh, yeah, very right about that. It, it, it's truly incredible to have stepped up my game in the last year to go from missing out on playoffs entirely to making the grand final is a huge step in my um, World Cup career. You said that you have improved from last year. Standings definitely show this, but uh, what would you say were the main improvements you have made that led you to this result? Uh, honestly, closing out finalist attempts. Uh, I still believe that's the hardest part of uh, being a track mini esports player is when you have that red F next to your name, when the red number is on your car, it is so hard to finish a round without crashing. It just becomes so much more difficult. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's probably been the biggest improvement. Yeah, and we could see actually improvements uh, happening uh, from one day to another. Uh, the first day wasn't uh, looking great for you. You've got that first, you've got that second, but also third and fourth. But the second was just a showcase uh, of your skill with two second, pla uh, two second places and two first places. What changed in between day one and day two? Uh, day one, I was playing Pokemon, had to go catch them all. And day two, I was playing track many esports. <laughs> that was the difference. That was literally the difference. Was it something about the uh, mental approach or just that that that's what happened i am convinced it's the batman shirt because day one i was not wearing the batman shirt day two i was wearing the batman shirt and look what happened that's that's crazy <laughs> is it uh, that's why you wore the batman shirt to the playoffs exactly it's my favorite shirt i'm thinking why not i'm not with an org i can buy whatever i'll just yeah wear my favorite shirt yeah that's crazy because i, I think that m many people were wondering what's up with the batman shirt and there there were those uh photoshops with you as a batman it, it was just an amazing <laughs> thing to witness oh, the, me the memes were top tier yeah. thank you very much to everyone who made a good meme out of it mm -hmm. but uh coming back to the performance uh there was one thing that you have been doing that no one else was doing until the semifinals when Grandi actually implemented it into his lines, and that is your new school line on the plastic part. Uh, on the plastic part, uh, do you think that it was better than the tight approach that everybody was uh, doing? I think it broke even, but you get you keep the gear way way easier um, on the plastic if you go up high. That's why I started doing it. Uh, it just made the next turn a bit awkward, but it was something I was able to get reasonably consistent with, so I just stuck with it. Uh, you said uh, in the interview for TMGL that they actually have never shown anywhere, just spam shared it on his uh, broadcast. And anyway, you said that you didn't uh, feel pressure to win, but you said that before the semifinals. Did that change when you reached the finals and came way closer to winning than ever before? Uh, no, as soon as I as soon as I reached the grand final, like I I was so exhausted, I was just playing a full autopilot. Like I couldn't finish a round without crashing. Like uh, there were so many rounds where I just touched the wall by a pixel, but that was just because of loss of focus. I was just the whole weekend was very exhausting, and I just I was just listening to the crowd having fun more than anything else. Mm -hmm. That's something that I wanted to touch on because you've said on stage that you traveled 36 hours to get to Paris. I am no expert in continental travel. In continental travel, was it really 36 hours? Yeah, from the moment I left my home to when I arrived at the hotel in Paris, 36 hours. Wow, that's that's crazy. You have arrived in Paris four days before the event has even started, which I assume was to give yourself a chance to recover from the jet lag. But, well, as you said, after uh, the event, uh, um, you have confirmed on, tw on Twitter that you felt like you had no energy for the grand final. So how bad how bad was the jet lag, really? It, the jet lag wasn't even an issue for me. I actually um, recovered after one day. Um, it was mainly just being at the live event and being under competitive pressure for longer than I'd ever experienced before. Like... 
you hear about TFGL players burning out after a season. That's six matches over six weeks. Well, this was, in my case, 10 matches in three days. So that really, that you can see how quickly you can take it out of you. Um, but your main goal was to play in front of an audience. Uh, how did the real experience compare to your expectations? I, I, had, I enjoyed it a lot more than I was initially expecting. Um, for the first time in my life, I got to see... Uh, just how much passion and effort people actually put into the game and how emotional they get during matches. Like, that was a really, like, nice thing to see. Um, and also, like, being in an environment where it felt good to, to show emotion. And then being in front of a crowd, that was, yeah, the best experience I've ever had in the game. In the Grand Finals, we saw two players without an organization. You were one of those players. It's been about two months now since you have depar- uh, since your departure from Edelweiss. How is the search for a new organization going? Uh, I haven't really been focusing much on finding that organization, but I'm going to ramp up those efforts now that there's like an off-season, so I have more time to focus on that. Uh, I don't think that will be much of a problem. It's just um, finding one that suits me. That's gonna probably be a challenge. Mm-hmm. After after those results, I don't think that will be much of a problem. But do you feel any different now that you're not under the contract? Not really. I mean, I I've been playing competitive without an organization like for several years in full speed before I even got into uh, TNGL. So the time I was under contract felt like a privilege, and I still be treated as such if I get an organization. I just love playing the game. Thank you very much for an interview. Do you have any short message for your fans and the viewers? Uh, I'll try, but I'm pretty brain dead. But uh, yeah, thank you to um, everyone who's um, who's cheered me on every step of the way with the comment messages, all the tweets and whatever, all the good memes. Thank you to Phoebe for sponsoring my trip so that um, I didn't have to worry about finances. Uh, really appreciate that. Thank you to my parents for always supporting what I do and helping me get through the organization part. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks to all the players and organizers at Madeira who make uh, TNGL and the World Cup such a fantastic event. And to all the viewers, you can find all the links to Mada's socials in the description. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed, I invite you to leave a like and subscribe for more interviews in the future. Thank you very much.